The Smelly Roses, Public Notice and Demand. May 23, 2019 by Anna Von writes. When it comes to talking about money, I still have to overcome waves of cognitive dissonance. Here is a good example of it from Egan Von Greyes. In the West, ordinary people's standard of living has been maintained by increasing personal debt and also by governments running ever bigger deficits. These deficits are used for buying the votes of the average citizen to improve the perceived standard of living at the cost of an ever-increasing national debt. This is an example of what everyone assumes, what everyone believes, and what everyone endlessly prattles, but this is not what is directly, observably true. What is true and what you can see for yourself is quite different. The foreign subcontractors running the federal government came in and passed legal tender laws and forced everyone to accept notes, that is, IOUs, as money. As a result, you haven't been paid for anything, not your goods, not your labor, for decades. You haven't been allowed access to the corresponding national credit you have earned, either. This is what causes any national debt, and it isn't your national debt. It's the debt of the Queen and the Popes who created and enforced this system on their federal employees, and then failed to ride herd on it. We, Americans, were supposed to get exemptions and to be able to exercise mutual offset credit exchanges that were never provided to us. Instead, the vermin instituted a vast identity theft scheme to redefine us all as United States citizens and or citizens of the United States, so as to deny us access to the mutual offset credit exchanges and exemptions we are owed. Mr. Von Greyes has been bamboozled along with everyone else into assuming that we, rank and file Americans, are responsible for this national debt and that it is the result of reckless overspending and underproducing on our part, or that alternatively, it's all the fault of useless eaters, all the poor people riding on our socialist coattails. That's exactly what the perpetrators of this colossal scam wish for us to assume, but we have two eyes and two ears and a brain, don't we? Look at what has actually happened. We have contributed our goods and labor in exchange for corporate IOUs since the 1930s and we have never been paid anything for it, not money and not credit, either. That's what the U.S. national debt is, their debt to us, not our debt to them. So, the source of the debt and the problem is not reckless overspending on our part and it is not the fault of all the poor people receiving welfare benefits, either. This whole situation is the fault of the Queen and of the Popes who allowed, 1, the imposition of legal tender laws on the federal employees, 2, the identity theft of Americans and mischaracterization of Americans as either United States citizens or citizens of the United States, thereby cheating us out of our exemptions and the mutual offset credit exchanges we are owed. These grafters are running no less than three, three primary bunco schemes at once on the American states and people, all under color of law. 1. Identity theft, claiming that we are all either United States citizens or citizens of the United States, that is, some species of federal employee or dependent, and amassing falsified registrations and undisclosed contracts as evidence for their false claims. 2. Credit fraud, based on the identity theft, they claim that we are accommodation parties and co-signers allowing them to access our private and public assets as collateral backing their borrowing. They access our credit via a process of hypothecation of debt, which leaves us totally unaware of what they are doing. They charge our credit cards up over the max, then claim bankruptcy protection for themselves, and leave us on the hook as co-signers to pay their debts for them. 3. Abandoned asset scheme, based on identity theft, as a result of mischaracterizing us as United States citizens or citizens of the United States, they deny us access not only to any actual payment for our goods and services, they also deny us access to the credit that we earned as a result of their receipt of our goods and services. Over time, this results in the massive accrual of our national credit which exactly mirrors their national debt. Bearing in mind that they have deliberately kept us from accessing this credit via the initial identity theft, they then propose to come in and claim that our national credit is a gift to the church or that it is abandoned assets left unclaimed by unknown parties who are lost at sea, presumed dead. The problem for them is that all of this was completely undisclosed and non-consensual and the result of unconscionable contracting practices and gross breach of trust. A good 90% of us are not United States citizens nor are we citizens of the United States. We were not given full disclosure and were instead deliberately misinformed. We aren't lost at sea. 
We are back home, standing on solid ground, and we are claiming all our rights, all our constitutional guarantees, all our assets, including our purloined credit. That includes all the historic trust money and actual assets left on deposit with all the various federal banks and savings and loans across the country and around the world. We are the priority creditors and we, the lawful people, are also the actual trustees, not the bank trustees. Not, in other words, Kim Guggen, and not, for example, Mana World Holdings Trust. Not Karen Hughes and any Dropbox created to bail out the criminals at the World Bank, either. This is public notice and demand. Deposits of actual assets in the possession of commercial banks are lawful goods and can belong only to lawful people. That means us, the actual depositors. Deposits are loans made to banks and are bank liabilities. Our deposits don't belong to the banks, and they are not abandoned assets, and they are not subject to claims by bank creditors. Those actual asset deposits belong to the depositors who are the primary creditors of all these banks. Period. Along with all the other criminal mischief promoted by our federal public servants, both territorial and municipal, they have offered to mischaracterize depositors as United States citizens and or citizens of the United States, too, and thereby offer an excuse for stealing our trust deposits and actual assets left on deposit in federal banks and federal savings and loans. The assignment of bank trustees by the bank to oversee these accounts does not mean that the bank trustee takes precedent or authority over the actual private trustees who made the deposit, and no phony claim that we are acting as United States citizens or citizens of the United States can stand in our presence otherwise. All the phony dossiers that the schemers have created via the IRS are also fully discovered. It turns out that, for example, I am not the manager of a rum distillery in Barbados and I am mad as hell to discover that any such fanciful, colorable idea has ever been advanced by any flat-rumped bureaucrat in my employment. It's time to make a deal or sit down and shut up. The sword of truth hangs over all your heads. The people, not only of this country, but the whole world, are now fully informed.